Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Emo Tempest and we are in episode 9 of Tales series and this week was definitely a super fun one. Uh, it's also what I like to call the meme week. Um, I was just pretty much tired of playing all the things that I had and tired of seeing, tired of running into the same situations. So we decided to build a couple of interesting decks. Um, honestly, they were all so much fun, but I wasn't prepared to run any of them. I, I didn't get enough reps. Uh, most of these decks take a, a few reps to get used to, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but for anybody going out to the Haunted Mansion, just want to wish you guys good luck this weekend. Um, I hope, I don't know if, if my deck building has encouraged you or helped you build your decks for this weekend. If it did, well, I hope, I hope it works for you. Uh, and if it didn't, either way, good luck. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, so without further ado, these are the decks we ran this week. I have a Golbez deck, the new Golbez. Uh, Opus 14 uh, uh, Infinite Loop deck Well, I actually brought two Infinite Loop decks And we'll talk about those in a second too uh, Alright, so this deck Is what I actually played in tournament I went 1-2 uh, It was only 3 rounds, 8 people um, I think So during testing before I got there like a few hours early they started, Decided to start testing uh, I, had, I had only done uh, Practice draws with, both of, with all of these decks um, and then after playing a few matches, I felt like this one was the most, um, the one I enjoyed the most, as well as the one I thought had the best odds. Um, and so, yeah, so let's talk about it, right? The whole thing is Golbez. You guys should be familiar with it by now, but if you're not, uh, at the beginning of your of the attack phase, during each of your turns, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a forward of three costs or less, you may play it onto the field, right? So the idea is to get to the Golbez, play the Golbez, and then let the fun begin, right? So you have, um, and it's a little, it's a little all over the place. I know it is tricolored uh, with a splash of earth, um, but it's ice, lightning, water. Uh, Sephiroth is to cover your bases. The triple Lua is for for haste on big boards. Dusk is to bring out the odd colors. Uh, Yuna is just an exceptional card for all the different uh, elements and to party attack and draw. Uh, the Noctis is the odd color, but uh, able to bring it out with Dusk, Golbez, and Alcid. Uh, lid, uh, I thought I found this card to be uh, really useful in the deck as it, you know, helped you get to all of these different pieces. Uh, White Tiger was just another um, odd color, but also ice playable from Dusk, uh, Golbez, and Alcid. Uh, Zeromis, very solid card. Celestia, which is probably the one uh, will change uh, going forward, um, but also just color fixing uh, and more targets for Lid. Uh, Alcid, solid card, you know what it does. Um, we've been talking about it for a while now. And then the main card is Golbez. I added the triple jet to help protect the whole plan, like once we're going in for the kill. Um, only ended up working in testing, not in tournament at all. And the Thancrids, because we do have a lot of uh, water lightning stuff and also lid targets, very usable, very good card. Um, Princess Sarah Cosmos to color fix. I usually found myself doing ice with this one when I searched it because we had the lightnings to cover other stuff. Uh, Cosmos is, if you draw it, you're pretty much good for the whole game. Uh, the lightning water Moogle. Uh, one clan gully, two hurdy. All of this is to help recur Lua. Um, so you have the, yo, know, you should always have the shoal in hand or available. Uh, the sage works out for us because it searches for earth or lightning. So pretty much all the fords except the water stuff, right? Like, because all the lightnings have ice in them, and then all the earths also have uh, one of the other elements that we're using. So um, I might even bump, uh, I think I should bump this up to three, honestly. Um, I think there was two more whips here. I think I took out the Lozaf at the end. Um, yeah, there's two more whips and then triple Sarah. Uh, game one, Mono Fire. Game two, Mobius. Uh, game three, Doga. Uh, lost round one and two. Uh, Mono Fire was interesting. I thought I would be a little, um, do a little better there. Um, I didn't honestly, I honestly didn't see the Golbez until late. And then by that time, my opponent had multiple Amaterasu's available to him. So a lot of this stuff didn't work. Uh, like when he comes out, when the Alcid comes out, just gets answered. Um, when the Thancred comes out, gets answered. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, but we held our own, I think, for a decent amount of time. It was able to... The, the biggest thing that this deck does is um, even if you do... Once you play the Golbez, 
by the next turn you have three forwards, right? Assuming you 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 reveal the a good one, but uh, if, as long as you're because you're not actually paying anything to reveal these forwards, the Golbez uh, generates enough value for you, so you should always have a hand to play something else the following turns. Uh, or if you get Shantodod, uh, Filiad, uh, Susanod, any of the any of the board wipes, right? Uh, you should be able to recover because you have more cards in hand since you're not playing anything from your hand, actually. Um, the biggest, uh, well, before I go into the biggest problem, I, I, I want to talk about the synergies. Um, I really like the way that all of the forwards worked well together. Um, I think maybe I can just change some numbers, like put uh, the White Tiger down and then take the Celestias out, add another Thancred, and then mess with some more Water Lightning stuff here. Uh, I was even thinking, I wanted to keep it under threes, right? So that was the problem that we were having. But uh, whenever the Golbez reveals the Noctis, it threatens the big, you know, the big plays next turn. Whenever the uh, Alcid drops in the Noctis as well, also threatens big plays the following turn. Um, and if you already have the Alua out, as well as being able to haste them, then there's a, the, the possibilities that the haste are really nice with both of these guys available. Um, and yeah, getting a, being able to play in the lid from the Alcid or the Golbez, get the effect, get the other, uh, get one of these guys. Uh, it all felt so great, right? The biggest problem was the backups. Uh, this is the backup line that I took. It was it wasn't efficient enough for what I wanted to do. Um, I just couldn't cover my colors fast enough. There was a few times while testing that I realized that there was um, that I was missing something or I got color locked. Which I found interesting because I always, you know, everything else matches up pretty well, right? But it was mostly the backups that kept me, uh, that crippled me. Uh, and I know since I'm revolving around the Golbez, I should probably add more cards that help me get to the Golbez, like Merwe, Batteron, even the Sildras. Um, but I just went with this for the first time, right? Uh, I do like where this is going. My biggest problem with the list is obviously if you don't get the Golbez, it's a little harder. Um, as well as finding the Golbez. Um, and then it's just the backup line. I can't, I think when you wanna play three to four colors, you need a little more consistency. And I really think the Sage is what helps it because you're always getting into one of the good pieces. Uh, and then the no summons kind of kills me, right? Like uh, we were having this discussion sort of um, recently at our locals and some of our, one of our players who will remain nameless just doesn't like playing summons. I find them very useful, and so um, he still does well uh, without to say. We, but obviously, he plays summons now in his current list. But um, I just I can't play like that. I need him. Even one of the monsters deck existed with the uh, with the two drop monster that negated summons. I can't play like that. That's not me. Um, but yeah, the, this is the gold best deck. Um, try it with the forwards, guys. Uh, mess with the backups. That's my suggestion here. If you want to play, with, if you want to try this one. Uh, the other two I'm going to run through a little quickly because, well, frankly, they're a mess, right? Uh, so this is um, Matiski's sort, not his exact list. I looked at his previous lists and what he, what I hear around the, around the shop about what he's playing, um, and then I went from there. I think uh, the Pains, the Isolas, the Aluas, the Rikus, and uh, Golbez Bismarck, and all this stuff. The Forge are kind of the same. I think I added, I added an Iris, an extra Zidane. Um, an extra Ishtola. I took out a Typhon. Um, but pretty much this is his loop deck to draw your whole deck. and uh, Or this is the concept of his deck um, to draw all your whole deck and just summon all the forwards, pr bring out wall, say no EX bursts, and then attack for like eight times uh, and then win the game, right? Um, if you guys don't know how the loop works, make sure to check out his channel. Um, I might make a, I might make a video for fun. Uh, if you guys want to see it, please make sure to leave it in the comments where we talk about all the all the loops and OTKs that exist in FF. Um, I don't think there's enough talk about that in the community, and I think it's very important um, because they're super fun when you pull it off, and it's, I mean, it's not fun for your opponent, obviously, but it's just it feels good. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the main thing is you get the out the North Island into the Tilica. You need at least uh, a Bart's and a White Mage, or two White Mages. I understand. Um, I was really mostly going for a Bart's and a White Mage to make it super uh, fluent. And then um, you need the a Meun and a Riku. And then yeah, everything you just play the Tilica, and then start playing all these cards. And then you're able to Meun the Riku every time, draw a card, re 
get those backups. You get Miyun, White Mage, Bart's back. Play them again in a, in a specific order. And then you refresh all your backups, do it all over again. Yeah, it's it's sim it's pretty silly. It's actually pretty simple once you understand it. Once you do it the first time on your own. Um, during uh, practice draws, it felt great. Uh, during play testing, it felt decent. Um, I want to add more protection, like Titans and stuff, but there's no. I don't know where to make space, right? This isn't my ideas, um, and so uh, honestly, ultimately, I wanted to play this for locals, kind of like have some fun. But again, the Golbus deck was just showing a little more promise, and I kind of chickened out to do this. I didn't think I could get away with it at, at all. But maybe I'll try it again next week. Um, now, the Regis loop is a little more complicated and farly like, more difficult, in my opinion, to build around. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with it, you need Renoa, Lani, Regis, right? Uh, two Renoas need to die in one turn. Uh, you play Regis. You target two dead Renoas. They will both come in. You target a Lani and a Regis with each Renoa. The Renoas will both die because they cannot exist. After their effects resolve, you'll do Lani uh, take a card and Regis reborn, and then you target two dead Renoas again. Um, I don't have again. If I do, if I get enough um, requests for it, I'll make a more detailed video on how the loop works and the rulings to it. But pretty much, um, you mill your opponent out using Lani. Uh, and so the main thing I wanted to do was bring in uh, cards that would help us build enough CP for that. And I thought Guts go. So the real problem with this too is that you're all over the place, right? You have Fire, Ice, um, you need Earth and some Lightning here. Uh, and, oh, and you need Magic Pots, which are already just like difficult on their own. Um, the other thing is, uh, so anyway, so Guts go, it, every time he comes in or attacks, I'm able to build up uh, like some card advantage, in like some future card advantage, which helps us out. Um, lets you also protect cards from getting into the, the break, um, getting RFG'd or um, hit into the into the damage zone. Um, so it, whenever every time he does that, you're able to stockpile some stuff. Uh, Dark Elf from so, for weird protection, I was kind of like, uh, obviously when no one plays this card, right? There, it's a full art for a reason, um, other than you know being an original art. But after uh, thinking about the kind of idea that I was going for this deck, the deck needed protection and some durability, and Dark Elf just fit that category enough for me. Um, if he's dealt 9,000 damage or more, right, that includes battle, summon, or ability damage, pretty much he can block anything 9 or higher forever. Um, he auto-loses, unfortunately, to BFA, but that's anything. Um, but... And then summons and, and abilities also, like, he doesn't die too, right? Uh, so with that being said, you're able to play him with Philia. He'll live. You're able to play him with Susano, which I don't have in here, which I wanted to add, but again, space. Um, he's also able to block, you know, big stuff. And everyone kind of has forwards in that in that realm right now. So it, I just feel like he does enough. I didn't get to test it. I didn't, I pro I didn't play any games with it because my Shantotos and Mist Dragons... We're in my other deck. Um, and then, all, honestly, the play draws were a little abysmal here. Um, triple Regis, Triple Titan, Triple Philia. Uh, the Hecaton and the Mist Dragons. Uh, the reason I have those two is, again, we want to be able to uh, take advantage of this, uh, this. And ultimately, you need two Renoas to die in one turn, right? Ideally, one is Magic Potted, but the second one needs to either be killed some other way. Um... You have Titans for that. You have Hecatons. You have Blaze for that. Uh, you have... Just try to attack, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's just what you have to do, and it's rough. So um, I brought some extra support for that. Uh, the Mist Dragons are for protection, mostly. You don't want anything... You don't want them to RFG your stuff, and you don't want them to Amaterasu the big plays. Uh, so you kind of have that. Same things for the Lail Cosmos is to help you color fix. I put these in here just to make sure I can produce ICP if I don't have any of these. Uh, the Kolka search is a north. The, this search is Kolka or Regis. Uh, Blaze is just for a little removal and as well to kill your Gutsko or Renoa. Same thing with the Titan. Uh, Titan and Philia kill the Gutsko mostly and so that helps. The Hecatons are there for that if you've built enough cards. 
Uh, Noctis makes this this whole combo a little easier because you're able to leave the Regis in break zone and then play it off of this. Um, you know, and Tyro and Shantoto are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I I don't know, man. I, I have another list that I want to try with like a water line, a water and earth backup line, but none of the none of the forwards are water, so it's really it's really interesting. Um, this something like this is going to take a lot more time for me to build out and fully test and take and pro and make competitive but it's hard with decks like uh versus tail doga you know the top four right monks and even mobius uh, i think there's some better options there um not better options but the the matchup is favorable in different uh against certain ones mainly because you have so many board wipes right but when playing both of these both of these lists i found that your idea the main idea is not to actually play forwards right like uh you need to set a backup prioritize backups because you need to have it all when you play when you go for the game the, when you go for the big play and so um you it's not only that you're taking damage but you're kind of trying to like hold them off a little bit and it's it's harder than it is when you're playing against you know all really good players or just anyone in general right um and if they catch on right away to what you're doing then the whole game changes too right um you know, they'll start freezing the Tilika. They'll start um, uh, saving the Amaterasu's for the Riku. They'll start, you know, obviously they're going to save an Amaterasu anyway, but uh, they're just going to, once they know what's going on, they play, a di they play a little differently, right? So, anyway, guys, that's it for me this weekend. Uh, again, I hope everyone has a blast at the Haunted Mansion. I'm looking forward to the stream. Uh, my money is on <laughs> somebody playing uh, Knights. <laughs> Uh, I think that deck has a really good matchup into a lot of things, and it's very underappreciated. Um, second would probably... I just don't want Doga to win again. So, guys, if you're trying... If you're playing Doga, it's fine. But if you're not, don't let him beat you. Uh, yeah, um, we're probably going to do... Uh, this is episode 9. Next week will probably be the last episode uh, because we're moving into 10 point, uh, 14.5. And then we'll just do some regular stuff, some analysis on the starter decks. And then the next set's pretty much um, less than a month away now, or just about a month away. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, thank you thank you again for uh, for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and goodbye.